Okay, so next part we are doing here for the Voron 3D printer today. So I'm just going to um, backtrack and show you what we're up to. We have a rail that will move freely across on this, which is great. And we've put the wires at the back. And the next step we've got here is this part. So this is what the bed will be going on. And this is pretty much um, a Voron 1.8 kind of part. So got some pictures here and I'll quickly go through what I've actually done. So we've put in these parts on. This is your LM8LUU. Hopefully I got that right. Now that has been pushed into this part here. Now I've got a um, guide of um, grease in them. these actual parts here. It's pretty quick and easy and if you've done this for linear rails as well you want to do that as well for this bit too. So I recommend give it a shot. So you'll um, have put these bits on, push these in. So quick story for doing this and this was kind of fun you will be getting these on the right side so that side up and you'll be using your force like pushing down onto it now the tip I found for getting the start of it in is you push it in a little bit by hand and put the rod in and you'll get a feel for what is flat by that I mean um, by that I mean that you put this here and it'll be flat on the ground and this bit might not be so you can um, adjust it up before you push it in again because you don't want to break these bits anyway so once you've done all that I hopefully had a few pictures there to help explain it you'll um, have assembled these, put these bits on to stop the um, parts falling out and then Bob's your uncle the other bits to notice on this is that um, you can imagine this is basically as if I've printed a lot and it's moved down so this is to if you've printed a fair bit the part here which is the front of the bed see how there's a notch that goes downwards that should be down the bottom and it should be flat at the top as you can see there okay so now we've got to this point you want to attach this to your actual 3D printer so I've um, pre-done these nuts here to get them ready to put on I'll have to detach them in a moment they recommend what happens here is, so here's your printer, they recommend you put it so this is on the back. So I'll do that now. This will make it a lot easier to assemble. Okay. So you print it like this now. Now this makes it a lot easier to put this bit in place. So I'm going to gently move this across and I have to think about putting these bits on so you can look at the shape here the flat part of the red bit should be um, going to your aluminium extrusion which is um, this part so we are going to do that now okay, so start preloading these nuts Fair few here to do. Okay. Now again, um, I don't. You don't need to actually um, preload these T nuts here like I have. The main reason I've done this is that I had this done a long time ago because I was waiting for parts. So because I was so bored, I um, went off and did all these. So looking at the basic assembly of this, you can confirm this on this one, they should be able to point in fine easily. Okay, so let's do that then. Let's preload this up. Oh, so quick step for doing preloading nuts. Put it in, press it in like that. Now this is why it is worth going for these T-nuts versus the um, other sliding ones because I wouldn't have been able to do this step this way it would have been a royal pain okay so let's do that for this part too so I don't have to be precise where these are going yet I'll um, be able to nudge them around with the screwdriver in a moment so I'm going to um, stop this recording 
and start it up again once I've got all these tea nuts in so I'll be back in a moment okay so we're at the point now where we have all the um, tea nuts put in place loosely and again this is why having the pre-installed ones are so good because I can loosely put them in and then have fun um, installing them in the moment so I'm going to do that now so again checking that I have all the tea nuts moved away so I'm going to put this in now I'm very gentle with these even though it's pretty fine so I'm going to find a way to place this in thing so I'll just check that I've done this right one moment yes so if I look at this I could put this in sideways like that excellent Oh, great. Now I do it for this side too. Okay. We're on a roll here. So our pieces are in place. We'll start um, putting them in. I'm looking at this going, this doesn't look too right, but we'll um, badger on forward. Yeah, okay, so, oh yes, because of the um, length of the bed plate, so, just check the length of my bits here, match up, turn these around, okay, do the same here too, it's more of a aesthetic I guess match this one up here too so again these can rotate at any time all right so let's put these things in so we'll start with this bit now in case you didn't realize the um it's a little bit trickier because of the gantry being where it is and i've got to make sure my rod is all the way in Okay, so it is. So I'm going to see if I can get at least one siding. This should definitely fit. So I'm going to move that in a little bit more. Oh, screw popped out. It's actually probably honestly easier with the screws out, so I might do that now. Screws are out. Now I'm going to push the rail in a bit too. So, honestly, I think these rails might have to be in a bit more than I expected. So that means these screws might have to be the other, the T-nuts have to be the other way out. If they are, I'll, I'll um, let you know and stop and restart the recording. So, have a look here. See, this line's up now. Oh, yep, that'll fit in fine. So let's do that. So, push them in a little bit. Same here, they have to go in a little bit, and this one is not, so I'll give it a push and a nudge. If you're wondering what that white stuff is there, that's some lithium grease. Okay. So, push this in place. Yeah, this is a little bit trickier. Mm, okay. Oh, I think I might have to take the screws out. Let's do that. Screws are out. So I know that I should have 16 M5 by 10, I think it is. I'll update the video if I'm um, wrong here. It's either 10 or 16. And I think, looking at the length here, it might be 16. 10 by 20, goes about halfway, probably 10. Okay. So let's try and get at least one in. And honestly, I think if, if this will scroll up for me, 
and hold its place. The gantry should be a little bit up to give us plenty of room to do our magic. So again, more screws gone. Oh, and if you're wondering about um, the cut on my finger here, that is because um, because I pushed so hard on one of the um, when inserting these LM8 LUUs that um, the piece of plastic that I was pushing on to help push it down, I know, um, shattered and cut my finger. So that's my first 3D printer um, accident, which is kind of funny. So I'm looking at this going, how does this actually fit in? And to be honest, like I'm looking at the rod here, this doesn't go in far at all and I think it's stuffing up the rest of them. So let's fix that now. That's in. Let's go a little bit further though. Does this fitting now? Oh yeah. Also, oh yeah. Okay. That's in. That's in too. Let's get the other side in. Now I know this side should be much easier to fit in. Oh wow. It all sort of just slots together, which is nice. So I know this part is going out a little bit too much. Let's fix that. Okay. So basically, because I know that these parts need to sort of slot in before I go any further. I'm trying to push them in place before the next step. Okay. That's better. Nice. Mm -hmm. Interesting, eh? So I've got most of the parts in. Now it's going to have to be a little bit of shimming get these bits to fit in, in the right spots. So let's do that now. This bit seems stuck on something, but let's um get it right. I feel like I'm a bit like the Russell Coy to the 3D printers. So see how that really loosely holds in place. Now they shouldn't be doing this. I'm going to loosely hold that in. Get you back in the spot. Oh yeah, so because I've got these um, bits loosely on, I can adjust them back and forth as need be. And in fact, probably what would have made this a little bit easier. There we go, excellent. Yeah, I think I know now. What would have made this easier is by making this looser, I could have pushed these bits out of the spot, as in these bits could have been shifted out of the printer and I could have shifted them one by one. And that would have worked fine. And see too how because this is um off axis that these bits are gonna give me a little bit of um resistance as well. That's okay. Let's do this. Alright, I'll pause this and get these bits in. Okay, so I found the problem. What happened was um, this rail here was actually too close down for me to do this part. So, in terms of the manual, you probably want to install this bit in an earlier stage than putting this on.
not necessary, but it'll be more convenient for you because now that I've shifted this up, I'll probably have to make sure that this is moving fine again, which will be pretty easy. Okay, so one moment, make sure as it's recording. So let's put these parts on now so you can see I've got this bit in. Let's get this part in. And I think it's the same for the bottom on the other side as well. So my biggest learning here is that, again, those pre-install nuts are very helpful. So when I've got this part here, I can now go, all right, does that line up? I don't know if you can see it there, but I can push that down. Get it so this bit is exposed. And I can even put like um, my hex nut in there to go, all right, line it up, which is great. See, look how easy that went in. So again, I'm not tightening these too tight. I'm not really worried about getting a perfect level to quote a Rick and Morty. I just want to make sure they stay on. So I think the realization I've had now is that these um, rods here should ideally be exactly the same length each. I have not measured these. Um, when I had them close by like this, they were, um, they were close enough. But I could see why it would be important to um, have them perfect because this rail will have to adjust for this extrusion, sorry. Okay, that bit is in, this bit is in. This is going to be a little bit exciting because at this point now you have most of the, the physical mechanics of the printer ready to put together, which is cool, eh? So once this is all done and I'm going to the point of actually putting the bed on, I will need to move this forward a little bit. I'm guessing forward, but but basically like this is not in the exact right spot that it should be. That's in. Same for the other bit. Make sure the um the head is ready. That's really good. You'll sort of hear it going far enough, see like that, that lets you know that that should go in fine. Well, well, no, in that case, no, it's just slightly out. So let's have a look from over this side. There we go. So if you could put your screwdriver all the way in. That should be telling you that that's good to go. I'll look at that in a moment. Okay, so that's done. I've got this done, that done. I've got a few more left. Push this up. Get in place. Now this is a little bit easier if you've got some kind of tool and nudge it across. I'm going to cheat and use something from mobile phone tool to do that. There we go. A bit more. Now again, I'm being a little bit lazy because my um, desk AK table uh, <laughs> AK ground setup not let me move around the printer too much. But I could see um, that bit all going and that bit. So I'm going to put these bits in and um, pick up the recording again and see how we went with it. Hello. Right, so I'm back for a quick um, fix up here. You can see here I've now positioned the bed correctly. Moves up really well. Which is great. Thank you. So that's good. So there's some magic numbers that you should know for this. So 
what I figured out is that the top should be 9mm from the tensioner or an easier way to remember it is that both of these front parts here regardless of if it's a 250 or a 300 or whatever build it should be 44 millimeters let's line up that properly yeah so 44 millimeters from the front now you will do that for both these bits up here screw them in tighten them up and um, again this should still be loose tighten them up now if this is a 250 mil build um, if you want to look up the numbers, it's roughly 122, 120, something like that. So you line it up there. Um, don't be too serious about that part. The important part is that there is um, this square. So if this is 120, this should be 120 as well. And that it has no sort of binding or freely moves basically for you. So tighten them all in, then retighten this part because you probably had to loosen that to um, put these rods on, and you're done. Great, eh?